Well, good morning and welcome to the River Wye. This is Lower Hill Court. Um, I haven't been to the Wye for probably three years now, um, but I have fished this stretch before, never this time of year. Um, so we're December, I woke up this morning, beautiful night's sleep in the local hotel um, to a very brisk minus four. <laughs> so what the hell we're doing in the water, I don't know. Um, but we're here doing some long trotting for the chub. Um, whether they are going to be moving or not on a day like today, I don't know. But generally, this swim has got a decent track record of producing a few chub. Uh, they tend to hang out in the sort of underfrows and the roots of those trees on the far side. And we are actually standing on the inside of a big, long, beachy swim. So it should be pretty good for whacking a big float over to the far side. And the flow should pretty much, maybe one or two men, um, do the job. Uh, I think it's going to be quite a long process today. I don't think they're going to be moving, if they are moving at all, I don't think they're going to be moving super actively. But first things first, I am going to spray maggots probably every 15 seconds and a decent pouch load of maggots as well for probably 15, 20 minutes because swim preparation on a day like today when you're planning to stay in the same swim is very important and I think if they are active, fingers crossed, I'm, I'm dubious, if they are active, um, getting them going and giving them some freebies to get them confident is definitely a, a plus side. So. Um, time spent preparing the swim at the start of the day is never wasted. Um, but yeah, <sighs> sort of lap of the gods really. Never really caught many fish on the float in minus four because I've never really been out fishing the float in minus four. So, um, but all plus sides though, zero wind. It's a wonderful, beautiful stretch run by Angling Dreams in association with the Wine Us Foundation. Two foundations or companies that do an awful lot for course fishing on the River Wye. So, um, credit to my mate Adam Fisher that's managed to sort this out for us today, but um, I think we might need a little bit more than luck. Might need to be very good today, we'll see. Right, we'll cover rigs and all that stuff later. Um, suffice to say, on a river that's pumping like this and that's this wide, you've got to go quite heavy. You will always get punished for fishing too light. You will very rarely get punished for fishing too heavy. Um, but what you will notice, I don't really know the depth out there. I'm assuming we've probably got two foot of water on to sort of normal levels that I know it at. Um, but I'm actually starting reasonably shallow. Now, I'm expecting to catch them quite a long way down the run. I'm expecting to catch them significantly deeper than this. But once you've fed the swim for 20 minutes on the maggots, there is a chance, possibly not on days as cold as today, but I've had it many, many times when I'm bulk shotting or when I'm sort of shirt buttoning, um, that the fish come to the feed. So number one, when you're feeding, never feed any more than nine, 12 o'clock. Um, ideally you want to be feeding slightly downstream because if they do come right up to the head of where you're feeding what you don't want to be doing is chucking the float upstream and then running it down because it goes down like a bag of spanners and you'll be missing bites all day long massive great bow in the line and it's just not the one so always favor feeding downstream but secondly if they do start coming up to the feed they generally start coming up to um, closer to the surface so what i tend to do for the first maybe 20 minutes of the session feed for 20 minutes no fishing and then for the first 10 15 minutes of actually fishing I gradually work my way down through the depths because what I don't want to do is go, right, that's going to be eight foot. Go straight to sort of eight foot. Um, two things are going to happen there. One, you're either going to overdo it and you're just going to be tripping bottom. Um, and two, and this is what happens in my mind, is that you're going to be running your hook bait below the fish and you could easily line the fish. And if you line the fish, if they're a bit spooky, that could be the end of the day. So I like to start reasonably shallow. I'm assuming, like I said, it's probably gonna be about six to eight foot out there. So I'm starting at three foot, about half depth. Um, I'll have two or three runs. If they're up in the water and they're actually having to go for the maggot, I'll know because I'll be getting bites. If not, I'll just take it down a float length at a time. Um, two red maggots. I'll change between red and white throughout the day. I've got an eight gram Avon. 
And again, we'll talk through the rig in a minute, but this is it. I've been feeding for a good quarter of an hour. I'm actually getting cold, so I'm gonna fish for that reason. One more pouch. That didn't go to plan. <laughs> we all make a mess of it at times. One more pouch. There we go. And in we go. This is a proper man swim. God, that eight gram bullet absolutely flies. Or Olivet. Not the sort of swim where you're gonna be holding back. You're just gonna run it at them at race pace. One big mend halfway down. There you go, lovely. I tend to find actually, if you, if you give Chubb more time to look at it, they tend to refuse it more often than not. Other species, you know, roach and dace, by all means, hold it back if you're standing far enough out in the river. But for chub, they're quite crafty. I feel like you want to make them have it. So, bloody hell, that's fast. Maybe got a 15 second run over 25 yards there, but we'll see. The key is to find the depth. And if they're eating their maggots, they'll be used to used to them flying past them, they'll be really having to work hard to get to them. So uh, today's going to be about effort and chopping and changing, I think. Oh, <laughs> Ty, look at that. First run through. <laughs> Can you focus on that? <laughs> That's how cold it is. So I didn't even see that bite. <laughs> it, I'm not. I'm not 100% sure. It's so far down. I'm not 100% sure. It, it is a fish. It must be a fish. I don't think the float dipped. I don't think the float dipped. <sighs> He's right at the bottom of the run which is kind of scary because that's 40 yards away. Oh yeah, it's a fish. It's definitely a fish. 100% it's a fish. I do not know what it is. It ain't no chub. It's a God damn, it's a chub. Oh, it's a, is it a chub? It's a chub. It's not a big chub, but it's a chub. I'm going to get the net under this because I didn't even think we was getting a bite today. That's incredible. Look at him, absolutely now. Do you know what? Right, I'll tell you this right now. I made a tiny little change on that very first chuck. And do you know what that was? I went from two reds to two whites. Now, whether that made a difference or not, I don't know. And that ain't no big chub, I'll tell you that much. I've had chub that would eat this chub before, but that is almost certainly one of the coldest chub I've ever caught and probably one of the furthest, longest trotted chub, if that even is a sentence. Oh, I'm so made up with that. You're not going to be too impressed. You really ain't. I'll tell you that right now because it's tiny, but oh, I'm so made up with that because where there's one, there's definitely more. Bloody hell, Ty. That is an absolute result, mate. The most unspectacular chub, but what an absolute perler. Perfection in miniature. And really, we've got no right being out on the river today. <laughs> it's way too cold to, to be optimistic, but... I'd rather be here than sat indoors making a mischief of myself. Look at that, what a perler. Right. <sighs> See if we can get a five pounder, because I'll tell you what, a proper one would be an absolute result today. I can't even feel my hand warmers. I put my ears. <laughs> I got hand warmers in my pockets. I got foot warmers in my feet. <laughs> but we're here. 
oh, they're actually they're actually reasonably warm, you know. I had these in the van for probably 10 years, and I'm like, oh, I don't need them, I'm too old. I, I'm too old now, too old not to have them. Oh. Right, let's get let's get feeding again. Five minutes of feeding after each fish, that's my that's my plan for today. Well they ain't caught, I'll tell you what, that fish didn't cough many up, which is um tells me that's a very, very lucky fish. But I'll take luck. Oh dear, oh dear, those hands. Things changed. And I've got a feeling it's not the river, I think it might actually be. It might actually be my hands. I physically can't feel the line. So I'm mending as I get it in the river. I'm mending about 10 yards downstream and then it basically is running too far downstream to mend from there. So I'm just trying to hold the the rod pointing it at the float and just just let it caress through my fingers on my left hand to try to almost mimic a center pin not to necessarily slow it down but just to, just to, to try oh, can't even talk, to try to control the bow and um, when my hands just gone totally frozen and numb now on the uh, I mean there's about 10 yards of that run that I didn't have hold of the line I couldn't feel that I didn't have hold of the line That is just rewards for being mad enough to be out here right now. I'm never going to stop moaning, by the way, about the cold, because it's so cold I can barely feel my fingers. But it is what an amazing place to be. Stood in the river, December. It's not above zero at the moment, I can tell you that right now. Pheasants just flown overhead. There's buzzards circling. Can't hear a thing other than a cheeky chappy from Essex that's connected to either... I'm assuming it's a roach. Uh, roach, chub, small chub. It hasn't really knocked, it hasn't knocked his head yet. There it is. <sighs> I'm starting to think I'd hooked some weed. <laughs> I'll tell you another thing as well. <sighs> My hands are just absolutely numb. I can barely feel a thing. Oh, compared to the last one though, ladies and gents, it's a specimen. Yoy! Number two. That is a right, right result. We are working hard. We're working hard for these bites. And they ain't big, but I'll tell you what, on a day like today, that's just rewards, that's mega. And you, you know they ain't, you know they ain't scoffing when you net a chub after putting probably a pint and a half of maggots through a swim, and it's, it's not coughed a single one up yet. You know the score, they're greedy buggers normally. And when you get them going on the maggot, they cough an handful up. Aside from my two white maggots in there, I can see one red one. Scratching, scratching day, but that is a, that's a mega result. Mega result. Dude, I'm so happy with that. Thumbs up. <laughs> I can't hold it, but there we go. Look at that. Again, perfection in miniature. What an absolute belter. Difficult swim to fish this for several reasons. One, we're chucking it a long way. Two, the pace is pushing a little bit. And three, um, well, can't feel anything. But 
two chub down. We're working hard, but we're getting there. We are getting there. Um, see what I'll do now. I'll run you through the rig before I can't feel my fingers anymore. Um, because on a swim like this, on a river like this, the size and well, the size of the gear makes a massive difference. So we'll do that now. say not every single one run down is a coconut because it's quite a difficult swim to fish at right now cold slight downstream winds picked up when the sun comes out can't see the float um, and the chub are clearly not climbing up the line and I don't blame them because oh that was a dip because I almost feel like we shouldn't be out <laughs> you shouldn't even expect to bite on the day like today it's really brutal um, but if you are mad enough to come out and have a go, then the rewards are there. Not every single day, but they are there. You just got to go and try. And if you are going to have a go on a big river like this, running a float or maggots or even bread down, you've got to be, you really have got to be geared up for it. Um, getting in the water is often the case. So make sure that you've got the old vest so you don't have to keep going back to the bank with all your bits and bobs. I've regularly lost a, uh, a dropper on, on a cast here or there today. Um, big gear as well, I'm not messing about. I've got my 14 foot glide float, 2005, 500 size reel because you've got it in your hand all day long, even though I'm long trotting and I kind of want a 4,000 size to retrieve the float when there ain't a fish on it. Um, a 2,500 is absolutely perfect. Six pound glide mainline, um, I would, Honestly, I wouldn't bother going any lower. Um, certainly not on a river like this for Chubb because it runs down the swim absolutely beautiful. It's so supple, it doesn't sink and, and it's very thin for six pound line. So um, I would pretty much stick with that. Um, I've got an eight gram Avon. Now, the thing with floats are on big river, any river really when you're float fishing, is the rule of thumb is you will always get punished if you're undergunned because when you try to mend the line or slightly hold it back if you're fishing for other species, you'll just pull it offline. And if it's not running down in a straight line exactly the same as all your freebies, you're not getting a bite. Um, so fishing light is often the biggest mistake that most people make on big rivers. They fish the methods right, they cast regularly, they feed okay, but then they fish too light and the pre presentation's just not right. So if in doubt, just go up a float size. It will just give you that much more control. And on a big river like this, whew, you want six or eight grams if you chuck into the far side or middle at least. Um, below that, I'm just working my way down through the depths. And once I've found bottom, and both bites that I've had, I've had today have, to be fair, been tripping bottom. Once I've found bottom, I'm just working every couple of run-throughs. I'm just literally doing a float length up and down just to see if they're raising or, or dropping down, down the swim a little bit. From that, I've got a tiny little micro swivel and I like the micro swivels because I loop to loop the hook plink on, but the swivel also, now whether this actually acts in practice like it does in my mind, I don't know, but I've got that micro swivel. They're one as a dropper um, and I have actually got an, I think I've got a number four dropper just above that on this rig because it's pacey. Um, but also when you're winding in a couple of maggots on the size 16, which is what I'm using today, often they twist up when you're winding them back up, up river. Um, and I just think that little swivel minimizes, doesn't reduce it to the point where it doesn't happen. That's for sure. I can tell you that for a fact, but it just reduces it to the point where you don't get any problems. Um, and that's it. Um, the bolt shot is actually a single olivet that matches the float. So eight gram float, eight gram bolt shot, nice and easy. No messing around with um, SSGs or anything like that. Um, and if I did want to change float, nice, it's a bit of weed. If I did want to change float, then those olivets easily, they all push onto the same sort of central stem. You just lift them off the top, slide them off your line and put the, uh, the weight that you want back on. So 
Um, it's big float gear, but it's quite simple. You ain't got to mess around. If you find the fish on here and you can get them feeding, and feeding is the problem we're having today because they're probably just sat in there like blocks of ice in them trees. But if you can get them feeding, they generally, that was definitely a dip. They generally aren't hard to catch, particularly if you're fishing on maggot, because if you're feeding enough maggot and patient in between fish, um, just keep the confidence going. You can pretty much, as long as you've got a decent enough shoal in front of you, you can keep them coming all day long. That's it, nice and simple. But on a day like today, you've just got to, you've just got to persevere because every rundown could result in a five pounder. I mean, no rundowns at the moment have resulted in a five pounder, but you never know. What they have resulted in is frostbite on my fingers and my toes. Ladies and gents, I really hope I don't get a bite right now. Because said Robin is going flying in the trees if it does go under. <laughs> That's incredible. What do you want, young man? Or lady? Hey? What do you want? I'm going to have to wind in. I'm sorry, you're going to have to move. <laughs> what the... On a day when I feel super privileged to actually get a bite, that has that's never happened to me before in my life. Like, it's landed on rods before, clearly, but not whilst I've been stood in the river actually running a float down. How cool was that? There's a fish. <sighs> Please stay on. That's a proper one, that. Now that's really funny. Well, it's not funny, it's good because the first bite I had was right at the bottom of the, of the run. The second bite I had was halfway up and that was right at the top. So, <sighs> hopefully, I mean, my way of thinking is that if you can start catching chub, generally the swim gets better because they're very rarely on their own. Um, this one, however, has actually had a couple of nods, so it feels like a slightly better fish. I think the first one was six ounces, the second one was a pound. This one could be a pound and a half, <laughs> but I don't care. It's one of those, I'm, not, I'm seeing things. I actually thought that lump of foam was a swan just then. <laughs> Uh-oh, come here. Uh-oh, there we go. Oh, he'll do, he'll do, he'll, de he'll definitely do. Come here, come here. Oh. In you go, in you go, that's number three. I bloody love this. I absolutely bloody love this. Like, it is, I was right about the boy, it's a pound and a half, <laughs> maybe two pound, I don't know, don't care. It is one of those days where people will write on the comments, oh, man up, Macy, man up, Macy. But those people will not be going fishing on conditions like this. Oh, that's, that's an absolute belter. I'm happy with everything on a day like today when you just almost feel a bit weird expecting bites. But now I've had a couple of dips. I've missed a few bites, I'm sure I have. I'm not tripping bottom. I'm just about a float length above it. And I've had a few dips. I'm starting to get a bit more confident. And... And like I said, I'm, like the last couple of rundowns, I just said to the guys, like, 
I feel a bit stupid saying it, but I actually feel like I'm expecting a bite now. Um, so anyway, yes, Robert's your mother's brother. Big gear, don't stop feeding. And <sighs> chubs are good. Yeah, baby. Oh, they are getting bigger. Only by about six ounces every time, but they are getting bigger. Look at that, wonderful. Uh, made up. Thank you very much. What a stunner. Well, the sun's illuminating the far bank and the river wire right now looks absolutely marvellous. But me and the crew are really struggling. <laughs> so this is the last chuck. Um, and if I'm honest, I ain't had no signs for the last two or three rundowns. Well, I'm being, I'm being a little bit um, optimistic. Probably I haven't had any signs for the last dozen rundowns. I don't think today was ever going to be easy, but you're never gonna catch anything sitting indoors, are you? And this sort of big river long trotting is my favorite style of fishing, bar none. And the chub is my favorite species, bar none, because they feed in the hottest of conditions in the summer. But clearly, as you've seen today, and I know they haven't been big, but they feed in the... <sighs> joking <laughs> they feed in the coldest of conditions as well so uh, you can't even see can you but i can barely hold the real handle now so that's it marvelous what a great way to send us into christmas